You're about to witness a seismic event. Daddy, can you put on Skibax Radio? No, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the that's the promo. Yeah. Welcome to Birmingham Theatre, where we will be viewing something called the, the Skidbugs film. Next to me, today I have a man named Robert Clothworthy. Oh, what do you think about this movie soon? Wait, don't answer. Because it's Skid Bags Radio and we got to take time to talk about it. It's Skid Bags. It's Mr. CD Enforcer, Poppy Carlo on Insta Jesus, as we call it. I'm here with the one, two, three, four, five to the left, the right. And we all dive out the plane with no parachute because we got our fist up like Daisy and her dukes. We get it ready. We're going to bring it to your right entertainment all night on Dash Talk Radio, Dash X. Every time, look out. Tell them who I got to my right, baby, and show them fight. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Gabby Shake over here working the camera, all my angles. Hello. <laughs> over here to my right, I have... Hey, hey, guys, this is Thomas working the board, twisting knobs, pushing buttons. You can find me at TMAD on Instagram. Devin, to my right. How you doing? Yo, 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 Sailor Dev in the building. What's up, fam? You know, I'm just uh, working, I don't know, uh, everything. I don't know, everything else <laughs> yeah. that's not being done by my lovely friends and staff over here, that are my colleagues. Uh, we have a very illustrious, esteemed guest, a veteran of the industry with us today. You guys are in for a treat. You're going to take us, we're going to take a little stroll back down memory lane, and we're going to hit a bunch of different genres because this gentleman is the fucking renaissance man over here, all right? I want you to put your hands together and introduce yourself, Mr. Robert Clotworthy. Welcome to the show, Skipbacks Radio, Dash Talk. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, all I can say is please pay the ransom. They do have me tied to a chair. <laughs> I put the gang, the gang is back on. Okay. We don't okay, want everybody. your ransom, yo. We don't want it. <laughs> Hi, thank you for coming, man. Oh, it's really, my pleasure. I my really, pleasure. really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. So yeah. before we get into your uh, longevity of uh, wisdom and experience in your career. Um, yeah, that'll take about 48 seconds. <laughs> 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 That's First if I all, stretch it. <laughs> well, you seem to be very much in the same vein as us as humor-wise, which <laughs> makes me very happy. Oh, what? Not funny? No. Ah, we, right. Oh! <laughs> same ah, I got it. Oh, no, no. Very, no. very, very you much know, in the same the vein. Is, I like this. This is, this is how men bond. Yes. They, right. they insult mm -hmm. one another. And that's, that's right. Like, so, you know, we've yes, all right. been insulting each other the last few minutes. Yeah. So now we're, we're tight. We're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. There we so, go. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, that's uh, right. We're, we're reminding you. We don't like you either, Gabby. <laughs> Bye, right. everybody. Bonding. Gotta bring the lady in. You know, you you know feminism. Me too and all that. You got well, me. Uh, speaking of insulting everyone, uh, usually we start out with a breakdown of a movie or a TV show or stand-up special, but uh, we're going to break down L.A. Comic Con because yes. our wonderful Carl Anthony, Mr. C, the Enforcer, yes. uh, applied for press passes, and this is where I'm going to give you shit. I remember, oh. Carl, uh, Carl was like, yo, Dev, can we apply for press passes for Comic Con? I go, of course, yes, let's do it. And yeah. lo and behold, Carl only applied for himself <laughs> to get a Comic <laughs> press pass. Well, you know. So, so he got the approval and he's like, I'm going to Comic Con. I'm like, great. Um, do, do I need to bring gear or anything? He's like, actually, I only got a pass. I was like, all right, fair enough, whatever. It's fine. All right, well, it is. It's good. First of all, I want to say I went to Philadelphia Public School. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my logistics game is terrible. I'm sorry. Right, I went not. to Florida Public Schools. You got one up on me. I got damn it. Florida is the worst place on the yeah. planet. Damn it, I just lost. All right. My Before fault. My fault. I'm, I'm obviously a conspirator. But no, that's what happened was I applied for the, the tickets, but you only can apply for yourself. It went out one person at a time. And and, and, and we, we mentioned it, but we never really brought it up again. So I thought nobody's really going to go. So I just kind of forgot about it. And three days beforehand, they gave me their approval. So I'm like, oh, man, great. You know, I'm going to try to go there and at least do something and see if I can get some last minute stuff. And never give you last minute stuff unless you're like important, which I'm not. Yet. Uh, yes, so, you're important to us, well, bro. Well, and to, you're, thank you, You're important Sire. adjacent. Thank you, Kanye. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Kanye. <laughs> Sire. Um, but yeah, Comic Con was actually phenomenal. It was a great event and whatnot. Three days of uh, interviews, three days of costumes, three days of beautiful people, beautiful women, three days of people just acting, three days of characters and figures and food and, and all different types of uh, businesses and radio shows and everything. And the great part was 
um, you also had a lot of great panels. So they kind of do what we do with Skip Bags Radio, which the whole point of Skip Bags is to teach you about entertainment, teach you what goes on behind the scenes, teach you about, you know, everything we do, like gentlemen like yourself. Um, and the same thing was happening there. There was a lot of great panels that I got to check out where they talked about starting out low films and beginning them independent and how you go through that process and also starting doing some of the comic book work. One of the great gentlemen uh, was the uh, draw artist for Superman, one of the great artists for Superman. And just like you guys said earlier, the guy's got these followings where people are like following him now, like animals and whatnot. Um, also got to talk with Bill Duke uh, for a second, uh, who I actually had met about 10 years ago at the a African American Film Festival in Arizona. So that was kind of cool and whatnot. Now, it was only my first time there. And um, I didn't really know the ropes because at these Comic Cons, you don't want to get beat up by a bunch of nerds and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, <laughs> you know, these dudes, they, they got a lot of free time and they don't do too many heavy drugs besides weed. You know what I mean? So they, they take you down and they practice a lot of that Kung Fu sword shit. Did you see some weird costumes? <laughs> oh, the costumes were phenomenal. There was yeah. a gentleman who, of course, he was one of the Falcon characters from the game. He had the wings, but he had the actual automated wing to spread out, I think, about 12 to 15 feet across. Uh, which was beautiful. It was a gentleman that was actually Groot, who was in a large costume. No way. Uh, he was about 15 feet tall. Was uh, he, he in was stilts, around... do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, he was definitely sure. was. He definitely was. And probably hot as hell. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how they do it. And whatnot. And some people make these costumes by hand. Some people have groups to help them with them. And um, they had a lot of great stage performances. Oh, one of the highlights that I really liked was that I, I got to meet some of the ladies from Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, which was Shout exciting. out. Did you meet um, Allison Bree? I don't know her name and whatnot. I'm not good with names. Yet. As you know, I'm an African American from Philly, so you know all white people look alike to me sometimes. So I don't Fair know enough. Who she is. All good. <laughs> that, that's just the you thing. don't remember any of their faces anyway because you never. You're, yeah, I, I, they, I've never went that high. Yeah, yeah, they scale. It's been years and whatnot. And they were some good looking chicks. But that was exciting. And also found out that Genie Bus is actually starting a new glow all uh, called the Wow uh, Superheroes, which is a bunch of females. They actually did live wrestling on the spot, in the spot. A lady called the Beast. A couple of other ladies did their thing. It was actually great to see live wrestling. I saw for the first time ever in my life, up front and close, getting it down, slamming around, choke slamming, talking trash. And that's her new thing, Genie Bus from the Lakers. Of all people, she, really? started, she, she was there. On came on stage and everything. She even liked my little post on Instagram. That's us, Jeannie. Jeannie trying to fuck. That's <laughs> right, Jeannie, ain't you, nasty ass? I know you are. That's oh, my God. Phil, Phil Dick is getting old. <laughs> 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 um, but it was actually kind of great. I wish I could have got a little more interactive, but I want to go back next year and go to other Comic Cons in yeah. the area. Um, because there were a lot of inter- to use opportunities to interview a lot of great people. The Power Rangers were all there and whatnot. Uh, the one guy, uh, the African American. Wait, from American. the from the remake movie or what? You got to specify well, was, what um, Power well, Rangers. Well, the, the three many. Power Rangers there was. There was the, a black girl that was a Yellow Ranger. Uh, there was a white, like Italian looking uh, white guy that kind of, kind of, I think it was you actually. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> I was there. But he's the Red Ranger, and when I, and then the Black Ranger guy was there with the, he, the was a black guy too. It would not, and everybody else was cool. They let me take my pictures with other people from other TV shows around. And what whatnot. was the highlight? What's your favorite moment from the? Uh, oh, my favorite movie? moment is when uh, I was almost attacked and accosted by the uh, Black Ranger's helper uh, for taking pictures of him. <laughs> this fool not only chased me away from taking pictures of him, I went three stages away to take other pictures. You can't take pictures over here either. I'm like, Dude, Jesus <laughs> Christ! I'm but like, you're the press. Well, that's well, you, first of all, yeah, yeah, you you have a press, press pass. pass. You should bitch at them for that yeah. because they want to prevent you mm-hmm. taking pictures as a fan because yeah. they charge for that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's how that's they one of the just ways they make. Assumed Carl was a they, fan. Since right now, I was. Have a press pass. I you, was in costume, just like an Indian, and I was. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, that's the thing. You got to let, let me know. I'll give you the camera and some lobs, and you yeah. just go around like we did at Clusterfest yeah. and look mad professional and just well, run straight to the front of the line. Well, I'm going to be more prepared last time. I think I was working on color people's time on this one. <laughs> so I kind of let it get behind, and then I found out about it last minute, and I planned And then, you know, being an entertainer such as you are, a lot of things come at last minute. So filmings came up, other stuff came up. So it was very last minute, so of I didn't course. get to really take it like I want to but from now on I think that's something we should really get into is just as a group just hitting up these festivals and going there and it was a real great opportunity and great talent around and great people in the business around and uh, LA Comic Con was really phenomenal they did a great job and uh, I want to thank uh, the LA Convention Center Comic Con and everybody else down there who made costumes and came out and the kids and the people and the adults and all the money they spent to help our tax problems 
There it was great. To and I gotta give a big shout out to you, Carl, because this was your idea. You found this. It was in our backyard here in LA, and yeah. you applied. You took the reins. You went. You killed it. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. yeah you yeah, good. Yeah, good yeah, job. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah Keep yeah, killing yeah. the game, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Round of applause for Carl. Uh, um, wow. So <laughs> at Comic Con, I'm sure there's not only comic book stuff, movie stuff. Mm-hmm. There's narrative, but there's also video game stuff. Uh, did you see any? Panels. Um, did you see? Did you have a favorite costume that you saw from a mm. cosplay? Mm. And um, what was your favorite moment from the whole f- the festival as a whole? Those three questions. Um, it was this uh, this one panel that they did. Uh, these guys actually did an actual. You know how you got those role playing games that the guys play, but it's more like almost like a card game book reading. Mm-hmm. Dungeons and Dragons. It was like Dungeons and Dragons kind of thing. Yeah, I play a, a, a bunch of Dungeons and, they and Dragons. And kind of did that live. Like, all right, you walk through the door, you felt through awesome. What do you do? They're like, oh, I do this. Oh, you lose 30 points. So they all like writing it down and going through. I watched that for about 30 minutes. and it Was, was really, John there? Was John on 100 there? With, uh, go with, I didn't see him with and whatnot. With Bravest Warriors? I didn't see him there at that time mm-hmm. and whatnot. But I was he only there for me, a day and a half. He called me, asked me to yeah. play Dungeons and Dragons a yeah. couple days ago, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, funny yeah, you brought yeah, that they, up. They were doing it on the like Legion M, who had a great panel set. Uh, with a lot of great people with informative stuff going uh, Shout on. out, but real quick before I forget, shout out Frederator, shout out Bravest Warriors, go check out the new season. It just dropped. Our boy John Amahundro yeah. plays one of the leads and is a writer on the show now. Yeah. So if you haven't checked it out, go back and watch our past episodes. We got to give shout out to Skip X fam. Yeah. Anyways, sorry, Carl. I didn't yeah. interrupt you. I just didn't want to forget that. Yeah, but that was a, that <laughs> was a great plug. panel. That was a great panel. Another great one was when they were talking about uh, getting money for independent films because some people get $8, 10 12 13 14 15 thousand dollars and maybe you crowdfund. Maybe look for an investor. So they always tell you, that, of course, you know, instead of asking for what you exactly want, you know, kind of shoot over a little bit. Uh, so Ask you, for more so that you can get your actual money. Yeah, so you can get mm-hmm. your action money. You get more great yeah. and things like that. And they were really talking about just with the new era of technology that the independent game is afoot. Um, and you can probably do a whole lot of stuff. You can build it, make it for yourself. So much of what we're doing, make films, make shows, sell them, flip the money from that, keep going. And they had a lot of great talks about that. So it was, oh man, it was a lot of great stuff and whatnot. I was, I was scared to talk to Bill Deuce for too long. He looked kind of tough. <laughs> <laughs> he's a scary looking dude. Oh, he's a scary looking dude. Like he's just sitting there. Nobody knew who he was. That was the, that was the worst part. Really? And when oh. I, because you know he was in Predator. He was the guy in Predator. You know, oh, maybe some fun. He was, you know, he was this guy's best friend. And Predator just came out, I guess, again. So I'm sure there's a reason he's there because probably for that reason, that sci-fi reason. Mm-hmm. But he's just sitting there, just leaning back, just looking mean as hell <laughs> and whatnot. And I go, oh, Mr. Bill Dix, you know, just uh, ask him a couple questions. And I was like, because, uh, of course, you know, they got the little signs with the prices and shit. And I, I'm a cheap motherfucker. So I was like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into this whole paying these dudes right on the spot. Uh, for it, so I was like, all right, I'm just. Be, but next time, from now on, I'm gonna go hard. Like I'm gonna be like butt naked interviewing people in those places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, that's that's. That, uh, I I want to officially say I'm never going to another convention. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I have to look forward to. Have you been to conventions because oh, of yeah, your? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's all, what I was all, gonna all say. So w- before we get into Robert really quick, um, I want to give a special shout out to uh, who brought you this episode today. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, your episode is brought to you by Dipstick Vapes. Please go Dipstick. check out the Dipper right here. You know we've shouted it out. You've heard us talk about it. It's chilling. And also, uh, this episode is brought to you by Nuwaza Apparel. So if you want the Nike of jujitsu in the fight world. Wait, how do you say that properly again? Nuwaza. Nuwaza is a jujitsu. Jitsu term, all right? That's why. It is um, N-E-W-A-Z-A apparel.com. Hey. And um, you can check them out. We're uh, tied in with 10th Planet. So, you know, Eddie Bravo, shout out to uh, all that camp over there. And next week, uh, we got a fighter coming in. Uh, we got Albert the Warrior Morales, UFC fighter, preparing for his next fight. Ooh. So, so we're gonna we're gonna prep him up. He's a he, he's one of the fam too. But um, anyways, I ask about the conventions because of your. Uh, your 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 history and your your career, Robert, and like you know, you can just go to your IMDb and you can just see. I think I just saw 173, 174 credits under actor. It's a it's a lot. Yeah. It's a it's, lot. It's, it's, it's up there. It's so up there. can you take us back to the beginning? Because I think some oh, of your early man, credits are man. like Columbo, you know, well, let, the Waltons. Yeah, let me let me think. I think uh, how did you get a, into Abraham this business? Lincoln was still in <laughs> office when I started. <laughs> uh, four scores. Yeah. You did that one. Man, no, I, I, I actually started in um in in high school 
uh, as a professional actor. And one of the first jobs I did was was like Columbo, Walton's, Emergency. I did all those those Universal shows that were real popular in the '70s. Um, uh, oh God, you, I, I, it, there's, there's so many. It drives me crazy. Rockford Files. That, that was one I was thinking of. And uh, my father was uh, in the advertising business. And prior to me starting professionally, I, I was, you know, I was, I guess a obnoxious kid. I just wanted to, to play and, and, and I really wanted to get in, into acting. And he finally relented, introduced me to a couple of casting directors that he knew who then referred me to a, an agency that handled a lot of young people at that time. So I went down to his... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That workshop. sounds a little me too-ish going on right there. Uh, I, I, a lot you know, of young the, people the, handing, yeah, this, handing you to their people. The, this, is the, this is the 70s. This was, it was joking. much more innocent. Much more innocent. <laughs> and so I went down to this uh, this theater. It was in, in Los Angeles here. It was called the Horseshoe Theater. I think now it's called the Melrose Theater mm-hmm. uh, on Melrose. And he basically had a, 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 a workshop. And I mean, I wish more agents were to, were to do this because it was really, really nice. He had a, a large group of young people that were his clients and every week he would have a workshop where he would bring in acting teachers uh improv teachers uh pantomime whatever it was so that the kids could get together and 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 do stuff on stage uh now yeah it it was really really wonderful so i went down there i just did some improvisation just played around with some kids and he came up to me later on. He said, "Hey, I mean, it all sounds nasty now yeah. because he said I really, I really like to. He says I, I'd I like to handle you. Did. You know, I was giggity, giggity. 14 or 15. He says I'd like to handle you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Well, you'll have to talk to my dad. He's he's handling me. <laughs> 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 right." <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. So it was kind of like of a grooming yeah. Yeah. that they did for kids. They kind of groomed you guys yeah. for a yeah. while before they kind of put you into the business. Yeah, and it was fun. And, oh. and literally, I, I started out hot. I mean, I got, again, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I You know, the first audition I went on, I, I booked. The, the third one I booked. The fifth one I booked. I mean, I was like, boom, boom, boom. I was, oh, I was, I was working kid. right away. Wow, yeah. Nice. And then from, you know, that was doing commercials. Then I would segue and do, do TV shows. And uh, eventually, since my father... His his great love was uh, voiceover because he was a commercial producer. Would bring in uh, different actors to do radio commercials, and I used to go down as a kid to those studios and watch these incredible people perform. You know, at, at that time it was you know Mel Blanc and Dawes Butler and uh, uh, June Foray and uh, you know Jerry Stiller and Mira. I mean these wow. these, these great people, people would come in and just you know per- perform, and I thought, wow, this is this is amazing. So um, I, I guess I guess it was kind of a natural evolution for me to kind of kind of get into that, and uh, once I started really, I'm, I'm one of those people that believes when a door opens, you, you have to walk through it, yeah. and because uh, a lot of actors they're, they're they're here in Hollywood and they're knocking on the door going movie star I, I want to be a movie star, well that movie star door is an opening, but the the other maybe the character actor door is wide open but they refuse to walk through that, mm-hmm. so basically I just trusted the, you know the universe a little bit and uh the voiceovers just really started to to blow up big time nice. well, so do you enjoy like as far as a student of the craft yeah. do you enjoy the uh live action performance uh equally or more or less than the voiceover because it, i it's, I, it's, it's 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 all it's all different i mean it's it's the same thing but it's just slightly slightly different i mean i've done uh you know those um you know, where they put the dots in you. I can't even remember what the heck it's called. Uh, like, like the, the CGI. Like motion, 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 motion capture. Yeah, yeah. 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 Motion, yeah. I've done motion capture, which is really weird. As a matter of fact, I did motion capture for the, a huge new game that's coming out Ooh. next year called The Last of Us Part Two, nice. which I'm sure... Who's developing that, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, which company? Is na- it EA? Naughty, Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog? Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog. Yeah, but it, oh, okay. it's, yeah. it's huge. I mean, the, the first one, Last of Us, was out maybe, it was, I want to say, like eight, ten years ago. Hmm. I mean, it was a huge game. It won all the awards. And this one is really, really highly anticipated coming out next year, and um, and that was it was not, it was fun because you actually got to perform a scene with other people mm-hmm. in voiceover. More often than not, you're doing it isolated. Mm. Even if you're doing uh, a, a video game like uh, you know, I mean, in Starcraft, for example. Yeah, like I was going to bring that up. By going to do Starcraft, <laughs> it's it's rare that they'll bring in any other actors in there with me. You're just in the booth yeah. with what I'm guessing is the engineer and producer, and yeah, like and the on the other side, yeah, yeah. yeah. and and you're doing lines. Do they have a camera on you? Uh, yeah, for the most part they do. Generally they do. It just helps the the animators to to try to animate the, the facial faces expressions yeah. Yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Which okay, so we touched on. You just brought up Starcraft. Um, yeah. By the way, 
one of my favorite iconic games as a child growing up as a child as a young adult but uh uh you know what was that experience like and did you know it was going to be what it became yeah i, I knew exactly back in 1998 <laughs> how big 98. the video game industry was going to be that's why i did not invest in any of the video game uh, companies <laughs> um, no it, it was right. it was interesting because the uh, the first game came out in 98 and so I guess we were recording it, I guess, in 97. When you think back how many years that is, it's pretty amazing for, uh, first of all, as an actor, to have a job that lasts that many years is is crazy. And um, when when I first was cast as as Jim Rayner, for those of you who, who are uh, maybe wondering, what character does he play in, in StarCraft? It's, it's Jim Rayner. He, sa- he says things like, some things are just worth fighting for. So, if you can imagine, for those of you who aren't aware, StarCraft is a, is a video game, a militaristic video game involving yeah. three different races. You have the Terrans, which are basically humans, mm-hmm. and then you have um, the Protoss, mm-hmm. and then uh, the Zerg. Zerg. Oh. Yeah, and, and I as, remember as, Brood Wars, like one of my favorite expansions. As, as a matter of fact, the, at BlizzCon, which is just happening right now, uh, they just had, for the first time ever, the world champion of StarCraft is not a Korean. Oh, oh wow. If you, if you can believe that. So, so history, cool. history was made. What is he? Oh, they took him down. Is he a, a, a Chinaman? I'm sure. A, no, 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 just no. It was he, Rob he, himself. He, he did it. He almost looked right, like right? he was like he's German or something. I don't know. He's oh, from Ontario. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, so. Young guy, That's so. amazing. Just a kid Nazis from the suburbs. Communists. Just a kid from the That's suburbs. Right. So when you're when you're in there getting notes from a director, this is what I'm curious about. Yeah. Is what the the biggest difference? What is the biggest difference between uh, doing a creative project for a video game versus doing a creative project for a film or a TV show? Well, first of all, when you're, you know, I was, for example, I was in uh, American Sniper, where, mm-hmm. you know, directed with by uh, Clint Eastwood and Bradley Cooper, uh, starred in it, and it was really amazing to actually work with those people because you're, you're, you're the opportunity of working with people at the top of their game in, in, in film is, I mean, it's tough. It's very, very difficult. Everybody wants to be in a, in a movie, yeah. and I was fortunate enough to get to get cast. So working at that level it was interesting because even though the scene was challenging uh, and literally about 30 minutes before we were, we were going to shoot the scene, it was just Bradley and I, uh, the writer came up to me and says, uh, Bradley wants to expand on the scene. And I, I was thinking, holy shit, what does that mean? Am I going to get, get, <laughs> am I, am I get, get all kinds of new lines? I mean, I, yeah. I'm ready for, to do what I'm supposed oh. to do. And now you, get th- what, you throw me a monkey wrench. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we, there's elements of the story that we haven't been able to really articulate very well or show in the film. So we thought in this scene, since it's a therapist, that was what I was playing, and Bradley Cooper, this would be a way where you could bring out that information. For example, like, uh, we talk about he's had three or four tours. Nobody knows how long that is. You know, what is a tour? Uh, you know, unless you're in the military, you really don't know. So I had, so they said, okay, it's, he was there for like 180 days. So I was able to articulate some of that stuff. But he, they said, uh, we just want to improvise it. And I, and I, we're just gonna and, wing it. And actually, and actually, for me, that was perfect. That was yeah, yeah. that was the answer to a yeah. prayer. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, really? Well, you have okay. Bradley, who is you know from the actor studio. Yeah. So he, you know, for someone like that to, as a play partner, it, you you guys are good. Oh, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it was. It seemed like it which should be really intimidating and scary, but actually doing it was probably the easiest thing I've ever done hmm. because he, he's 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 just so present. And I knew what my job was, which was to try to trip him up a little bit because I'm playing a therapist, so I'm trying to get him to, to be honest. And what's his job, as 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 Chris Kyle was, here's a guy that doesn't like to talk about what's going on. Hmm. So we we both we had opposites, and yet we knew what the the purpose of the scene was. And then Clint Eastwood is sitting there, and you're going, oh my God, what what strange reality? <laughs> yeah, you know, this can't be happening. This, this, you know, I can't be in a room with just the three of us. This makes no sense. But uh, but when, once we did it, it was it was seamless. It was really kind of weird because even though we were improvising, we never stepped on anybody's uh, any others uh, any other anybody else's lines. Even though there weren't really lines, we knew what we were going to say, but we were just talking and listening. And uh, the scene was was wonderful. It ended up being um, Clint's favorite scene in the movie, and actually was a scene that they showed at the Academy Awards because uh, Bradley was nominated. Uh, for for that, so it was it was an honor. So when you talk about what it's like working on a film at that level, it's 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 friggin' fantastic. Huh. It doesn't get any better than that because you, you're dealing with people that are at the top of their game, that are that are legends, that are you know 
Academy Award winners, Academy Award nominees. I mean, phenomenal people. I mean, the best camera people. Everybody's the best. Um, but what's what happens when you're working on camera is you're somewhat limited in how you look. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's getting to be less so because now they're able to do you know some motion capture and change things around a little bit. But still, for the most part, it, you know, you are who you are. Yeah, I'm not going to play somebody that's that's 15 years old. I'm not going to play somebody that's 90. I'm going to play somebody that kind of looks like me. And in, in video games or in uh, in voiceover, you throw all that out. Uh, when people meet me who have heard Jim Rayner in, in StarCraft, I make a joke and I say, I know there's kind of a cognitive disconnect here when you, when <laughs> yeah. you see me compared to what Jim Rayner looks like because I'm in such better shape. Um, Jim Rayner's a Marine right. for the Terrans. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's like he's, jacked. He, and he like... kicks ass. But the thing is, you know, I am him. Because it could, because uh, it's more than just what he looks like. I mean, yeah. you know, we're all look different, but who what defines a person is what's between the ears. Who yeah, you are, what the, the choices yeah. that you make. In fact, that's one of the the lines that that Jimmy says is, "We all got our choices to make." And it's right. uh, so if, for me, it, it really just resonated. And and plus really plus, it was a character that played. I played it for so many years, and there was this great character arc and evolution. It was a love story. It was had action. It had, had heartbreak. It had all kinds of. All the elements that you want to perform as an actor, so it was incredibly gratifying. Huh. So oh. all in all, I would say voiceover is more fun because the opportunities are greater and you're not limited. Nice, nice. Yeah, you make it sound like jazz. It, it really, yeah. it is. It is like that. Yeah, because the the rules are kind of th thrown out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, and they give you a lot of freedom. At least with with Blizzard, they give you a lot of freedom to uh, as to how you're going to interpret the role. Nice. So you know, it's not they're just not locked in, and also with Blizzard, they don't have a, a timeline where they go, oh, we got to have this game out in six weeks, so we really got to push it. No, they they put the game out when the game is when they feel when the game done. is ready. When it's done. Yeah. So yeah, so they take they take as much time uh, as you as you want. Nice. So as a as a voiceover, because I I have I want to do voiceover too, but you know when you're getting into something, you don't really know how to start. So people say you know get a reel, you know send it out to managers, stuff like that. What, what kind of reel would you advise somebody that's new into trying to do voiceover to make? Like, what kind of reel should well, they make, and how should they go about like getting it out? That, well, that's it's. I'm glad you asked that question because that's that's what everybody assumes is the first step. Mm -hmm. That's but what they it, tell me. But it's well, it's an expensive first step because mm -hmm. to put together a, a good demo, it's going to cost you anywhere from fifteen hundred to four or five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it's not. It's not a, a, a minor, I mean, I, a minor I a, investment. I got a Macintosh computer. I mean, you know, you can do it all at home. There, there you go. Stuff. There you go. But yeah. think the pro the problem is, mm -hmm. is that it is essentially your your calling card. You're going to spend all this time putting it together. You're going to spend all this money, and if it's not competitive, mm -hmm. you might as well have not done it. Awesome. Yeah. Because you're going to be competing against people that are really, really good. Mm -hmm. My number one piece of advice for people that want to get into voiceover, and this is. You know, I've worked with a lot of people, both on camera, off camera, but I have to say that the the level of talent that's involved with the people that are doing voiceover, uh, on average, is really, really high. They're really, really good actors. For example, I worked with uh, a guy last year, and we were doing, it was a movie called Triple X, Xander Cage. I mean, I don't think anybody hmm. saw yeah. it. It was, yeah, yeah. It was uh, and we were... We were brought in as the ADR group. For those of you who don't know, that's automated dialogue replacement. It's basically a loop group, Walla, where you go in there, and let's say, for example, the scene is uh, a, a guy getting into a fight, and he gets thrown out a window, and he lands on a, uh, you know, on the street. Well, when they shoot that, they don't record the guy screaming because right. it's a stunt mm -hmm. guy. You know, they, yeah. they they add that later. So later on, they'll bring in actors who'll go, okay, I'll be that guy, and you go, ah, you know, and, and you fall mm -hmm. out, you make a sound. And so we were just doing grunts and groans. It was really not that taxing as far as talent is concerned. It was really not that challenging as, as far as, when I look at it, as far as the talent needed to, to do that job, it's pretty low, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was working with a guy, and I'm talking to this fellow, and he's uh, he's Filipino, and I understand he got, he was actually nominated for an Olivier Award as the role of the engineer in Miss Saigon. Mm -hmm. And then within about, a few weeks of when we were f finishing this movie, he was going to go to New York to star on Broadway as the engineer in the Broadway revival of Miss Saigon. Now, this guy, for those of you who don't know what the Olivier Award is, that's the, the British equivalent of the Tony. It's like the Oscar. It's okay. it's phenomenal. So here's a guy who's a, a Olivier Award nominee going, uh, 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 
<laughs> wow. And, and, and happy to be there because, you know, we get, we get the SAG rate, we get residuals, so we're, it's all good. Yeah. So I, I only bring that up because I want everyone to know that the level of talent that's out there, especially in a big city like Los Angeles or New York, is really high. So you're, you're, you have to be really, really good. And part of what you need to do is you have to be a good actor. And what is being a good actor? You, have, you really need to understand yourself, who you are. And you've got to be vulnerable. You've got to be available to to just tear your chest apart and let your your emotions be exposed. So it, unless you're willing to go that route, it's it's way too early to put together a demo and think that it's going to be competitive. Because if if it's not, then it's you, you know you, you wasted your money. Like, what about like when you send it out? So let's say you eventually get to the demo stage. Yeah. You, you, okay. got, you know you're just like fuck it. I'm make this damn okay. thing and try it anyway. How do you go about, like, getting it out there? Like, do you just send it to random, like, you know, manager dudes on the street? Because I figured it's going to hit their junk mail or something, you know? Well, you know, part of you know, the business is changing. Uh, it, used, it used to be where you would literally have, like, a, you know, a demo or, like, a CD or something that you would send out. Now it's, it's I think it's a little bit more important to have a really good social media presence. So you need to have a good website. Again, now we're talking more money. Yeah. So, and you have to have a website that looks professional. Yeah. It can't be something that's that's doesn't look professional because a lot of agents yeah. will will look at, at you know even if they look at the packaging of your demo if they get if they get 20 in a day for example and one comes in just a you know a, a, a plastic bag from the supermarket as opposed to one where a guy did had it professionally designed and mm -hmm. packaged which do you think the agent is going to is going to reach yeah. for especially since the agent is really busy yeah. Yeah. they're get, you know when i say 20 a day that's probably a small number they probably get more than that so it's it's when do they reach for that one? So you really need to have a, a, a really nice website. I think that's probably a little bit more effective. And and also referrals are, are really the best. If you have somebody, if you know somebody that's with that agency that can recommend, hey, listen, can you listen to you know Joe Blow, blah blah blah, he's, he's terrific. Then you have a higher likelihood that uh, that the agents will, will get to it. But also know that when you have that demo out there, w once they do listen to it, yeah. they're not going to want to listen to it the same demo six months from now if they yeah. if they've taking a pass on yeah. you whereas if you're an actor and you have a uh, you know a headshot who knows you, you can send a head a headshot to that same agent you know 10 times in a year and yeah. all of a sudden they, they uh, you know casting ca crosses their desk that morning they go oh yeah, yeah. she'd be perfect for this yeah so it, 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 again it's it's i i tell people to kind of resist that temptation to spend too much money right away but once you do it we can talk about how how you can how you can make it work so yeah, similar with the headshots. They say you got to change headshots, take a lot of new headshots. Oh yeah, yeah, going yeah, yeah. And you'll come and you're like, I just got these last week. They're like, yeah, but you're like older now. You know. Well, casting you know? directors will keep your headshot on file. Yeah. Agents maybe are low. I think I don't know. My experience was that agents are a little bit less active, whereas yeah. casting directors are more active in like following up and being like, oh, I right, think I remember right, somebody. Right. It's be good for yeah. this part. That's more their that's more their lane. They look right. back, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, when you were talking about preparing for a role, obviously there's certain roles that require more preparation than others. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you know, go do ADR. I just did ADR for a movie myself that you know we helped produce, and it was really just because like we need fun stuff, you right, know. Right. So I brought a couple of my friends in that aren't you know they're actors, but they they're not working, they're not you know professional, they're like you know community yeah. theater friends of mine. So we did it. It was all good. The level was there, but at the same time, I didn't you know we I need to prep them. We didn't need to like get into character it wasn't <laughs> method you know but you know so where where do you take that training if you're preparing for a high level role like something like starcraft or mm -hmm. um one of your numerous other uh, credits where do you take that mental preparation and then connect it with your instrument your physical voice instrument because well, one of my one of my favorite quotes was from uh, Pablo Picasso, and he, who was one of my favorite artists. Oh, he quote Picasso, it, Picasso up in well, here I'll, I'll, now. I'll, 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 I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why because he said he studied his entire life to learn how to paint like a child, huh. which is which is basically true. In other words, you study, you learn your craft, but when it comes time to perform, you have to let it go. Hmm. You can't be thinking about it. If you're a baseball player, uh, you know you, that's why you have batting practice. That's where you work on the swing. That's where the coach is saying, you know, kind of rotate your hips or whatever the heck it is. You know, you know, raise your hands, whatever it is. You know, he's, he's giving you tips. But when he, when you step into the batter's box, if you're thinking about the mechanics, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're you're toast. It's gotta be muscle you're, you're memory. Gonna, you're gonna strike out. It's gotta be pure. It's, you just gotta be there. You gotta trust that everything that you've learned is is gonna come together. Huh. Um, so the the best preparation is to be. Thinking about it all the time to be to be make sure that you understand who you are, your instrument, so that when the cast or when the director comes and said, "Listen, uh, uh, I need this to be more blue," for example, 
need to go, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, to be able to say, I got it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah I know what mm. you mean. Yeah. And, you, and just go with it. One of, the, one of the things I like to say is if you're going to go wrong, go strong and wrong. You know, be, be, yeah. be bold. Uh, uh, I know that it, in ADR, a lot of people are timid when it, when it comes to the microphone. You can't be timid. Oh, no, I definitely wasn't. Everyone oh, yeah, else. Yeah, oh. you're not. No, no, no. Yeah, getting that, getting like, that thing out of your hands is going to be very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I'm Cuban, and man. I'm not, I'm not talking talk. about the mic. Right. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I knew we were going to love Hello, great. hello. <laughs> nice. Uh, Robert, I do real. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bef- I mean, I want to go through a couple of your okay, favorite sure, credits. Sure, sure. Can we sure. can, can yeah, I do yeah, this yeah, and just yeah, ask you yeah, a little bit, yeah, like yeah, how yeah. is it like on this project, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing? Because I want our audience to know the significance and the reach that you as a career has had, oh. man. So we we left we we started with you know. You, well, I've also been lucky. I mean, I, you know, I don't deny that. I mean, there's a lot of talented people out there. But another thing you want to do to be successful in this in this business is you got to have a. Um, uh, uh, the right attitude. First of all, you have to understand that that uh, rejection is the is the norm. Yeah. I mean, if you're losing ninety five percent of the time, in other words, you audition ninety five percent of the gigs you audition for, you don't get, but five percent you are getting, you're a success. Yeah, nice. that's a success rate. So you've got to be able to you've got to be able to tolerate that rejection, and not take it personally. Um, you know, Brian Cranston, for example, when he he started to become successful when he realized that. The audition, instead of auditioning for a job as the mentality, I want to get this TV show, I want to get whatever this is, he looked at it, he says, you know, this is an opportunity for me to show what I can do. So it was an opportunity for him to perform. So he took the pressure off of trying to get the job and instead just said, I'm just going to perform. I'm going to do what I do. And whether they hire me or not, that's their choice. I, I can't make that decision for them. So you need to have that kind of an attitude. Plus, you need to be, I think, Someone that's easy to work with. Yeah. Uh, so you say networking and work being good to yeah, work with. Yeah, because there's a, a there's a lot. There, yeah, there's a lot of talented people out there, but a lot of actors have this feeling that um, they, they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders, like it's all so important. Yeah. And you know the Coen Brothers, who directed, I always always get this movie wrong, Old Country for a New Man or whatever that that mm-hmm. one was no, with no. Daniel Day Lewis. When they won their Oscar, they said. You know, we were, we've were we been making movies since we were about six or seven years old. We did a movie called Henry Kissinger, Man on the Run. <laughs> and they said, what we're doing now is not all that much different. And it's true yeah. because it's we're playing in the sandbox. We have the opportunity as adults to still play in the sandbox, to do the stuff that we were doing as kids. Why are, goods, why are kids such great actors? Because they believe what it is they're doing. You know, you put, you know, as a kid, we're talking about Superman. I remember yeah. as a kid, I would put like a towel oh on my around my neck uh, yeah. and tie it and think I was Superman, think I, I could fly. I thought I actually flew one time when I yeah, jumped. I was like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. flew that time for half a yeah, second. That, that's, yeah, that's yeah. it. So the, yeah. the, but you need to understand that as an adult, you know, we, 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 we lose that yeah. as, as an adult. And you yeah. need to, as an actor, to be able to totally uh, engage yourself completely in the role that you're playing. When, yeah. I, was, when I was working with, with Bradley Cooper... Um, I was looking in, into his eyes, and, and I'm telling you, Bradley Cooper did not exist. He was not there. It was Chris Kyle. He had totally given himself to it. I mean, he spoke with a Southern accent. He, you know, I, I've met him uh, personally many times since, and he's kind of gregarious and kind of goofy and kind of nice and and very open. As that character, no, he was clipped. You'd, you'd ask him a question, his lips hardly moved. He was locked into that character. You just, he just gave himself completely into it. Now. Other people may look at that and go, "Oh God, that's so weird." Oh, and then you feel like, you know, and, and you start you start second guessing yourself. But you just have to trust and have fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. sure he was having fun in that way. It was serious yeah. business, but it was still fun. Yeah. I agree. No, I mean, you're you're talking to somebody who's method myself. And when I used to teach, I, I tell people, I'm like, "Look, if you don't believe what you're doing, nobody else is." You yeah. know. Well, I have I have a good friend that used to work for for Marlon Brando. And Marlon Brando would say, the best actor is the best liar. The best liar. Yes. You want to see, know who Agreed. the best actor is? Who, who's the best liar in this room? That's yeah. going to be the best actor. Agreed. I'm a shitty liar. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I got a lot of work to do. Uh, that, one of the things I was telling myself is because I'm trying to be a little actor, whatever, true. And um, as you do it and whatnot, I was noticing that and people are like, oh, you did so good. You did so good. You were so great in that role. And I'm looking like, ah, I don't believe me. <laughs> so it's like no matter how good somebody else tells me I was, I'm until I look at that screen and I'm like, holy 
fucking shit, that's me. I'm that's like, you, well, but it's not you. Yeah, it's yeah, someone like, else. When it like almost just scares you to the point like, I can't believe I'm that, that I, wow, like I really believe me there. And I know that's not the person I am. That's when I know I've achieved. And do you feel like that from a sound perspective, uh, almost, with the well, audio situation? Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting. Since I've been doing it um, so much and for so many years, and uh, I'm, I'm working so much with all these narrated shows, I am able to separate myself from the show. In other words, when I watch Ancient Aliens or Curse of Oak Island or Curse of Civil War Gold, you know, part of me is listening to my voice, but it's, it's more uh, an evaluation just... Technically, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm listening to it going, did I hit that moment right? D- did that what I want? Did it sound good? Am I speaking too fast? Was it too slowly? Am I articulating? It's more the, the, you know, the technical aspects of it. But at the same time, I'm able to separate and know that it's not me and just watch the show and listen to the, to the voiceover. So, and that, that's kind of a, a neat uh, place to be in because if you get too, uh, I guess, too, too concerned about what you're looking like or what you're sounding like, then, then you start, then the doubt starts starts yeah. coming up you start getting tense you start worrying you start thinking about other things as opposed to just being the best actors are the ones that just be it's you don't need problem. to be anybody else than who you are like Keanu you Reeves know? like just gotta be yourself in, in that position yeah Keanu that was exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, bro. I Go nailed back it he's the same he's the same guy yeah. in everything he plays same but, style but, but in his own way you that, know that, no I mean? you're, you're, you're right in that regard yeah. Keanu doesn't try to be any anybody else other than Keanu He's like, I'm going to kick some ass, and I'm not going to really talk much while I'm doing it. But imagine <laughs> Keanu Reeves doing voiceover in a video game. <laughs> no, wouldn't it be, I, you know, I don't know Keanu. I'm sure he's a wonderful Did guy. He do? But I would think that he would be rather bland. Rather don't you, yeah, didn't he's he, terrible. Did, do you know, if he's himself. Well, do you know if he did voiceover for the Matrix video games? Did he do his own ADR for that? I, I don't know. I would guess so I because care? that character. No, <laughs> is it important? <laughs> no, it's not that. Important. I don't know. Let's look at. Let's not, let's stop the show. Let's find out. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, I wait. Wanted, so wait a minute. You do all the voiceovers for Ancient Aliens? Yeah, yeah. I've like listened to your voice for probably six to twelve thousand. So hours. okay. So so let me give so you. This. Let me give you this. <laughs> is it possible? Could it be? What if it were true? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fuck beating Jay Z and Beyonce. Oh. <laughs> Ancient right. astronaut Black. theorists yes. say yes. Tell yes. Us, Robert, tell me. Black worthy son. Do you identify with the ancient alien theorists? Uh, oh, well, you know, I, interesting, interesting, because people ask me that question. They say, "Do you believe? What do you? What's your opinion?" <laughs> And um, catch him at Alien Con in Baltimore. Yeah, this, by, by, by the way, yes, you can ask me that question at Baltimore's uh, Alien yeah, Con coming up next weekend. There is you that go. your voiceover you too? When I hear that commercial no, all the time, no, it's not. I don't know who, that, who that is. Who's that, who's that pretender to the crown? Right. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I can't remember, What was the question you were asking me? Was do you uh, identify? Oh, do you identify? Do your beliefs oh, align with do I believe? ancient astronaut the, or ancient alien okay. theorists? Uh, well, people ask me that, and if I were to totally support you know believe it 100 percent. i'd be almost like a preacher that would be my attitude that it had yeah. as an actor it's like listen i know this you gotta you gotta believe me uh if i was a, a pure skeptic and thought it was all a bunch of crap that would affect my attitude as well then i would be you know kind of dismissing everything mm-hmm. instead of saying i'd say instead of saying ancient astronaut theorists say yes i'd say ancient astronaut theorists say yes it's like, really, yeah. can, can you believe yeah. what? Yeah. Are you serious? Yes, can you believe? Man. Can you believe that? Or, or, it is, or as opposed to ancient astronauts, they say yes. Yeah. You know, like I'm really trying to hammer it down your throat. So um, I understand that my, what my job is as far as the, the show is concerned. And I understand where the producer, who is also the creator and the writer of the, of the show, is coming from. And his, his attitude is one of being, he's a skeptic, but he's open to the information. Hmm. So when I get his script... I don't, first of all, I don't get that script in advance. Mm-hmm. I don't get it a day before. I show up in the studio and they hand it to me and I go into the booth. And when I open up the page, that's the first time I see it. I don't read the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I look at what I'm going to say because part of it is, A, I have I have the skill level where I'm able to get the words off of the page pretty quickly. And for those of you who want to get into voiceover, if, you, if you're not a good cold reader, that's a skill that's critical, which means you've got to read out loud all the time. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, yeah. practice yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I'm really good about, about grabbing the, the words off the page and also having an, an interpretation. But at the same time, when I'm getting this information, I want to be, 
want to be affected by what it is that I'm reading. So if they were are to say, for example, let's say uh, a spaceship landed on June 3rd, 2015, and uh, the, the Pentagon it refuses to release the information. This is a fact. Let's say theoretically it's a fact. That's going to be pretty amazing to me. I'm going to go, holy crap, wow. So I allow that excitement or that amazement to come through in my read because I'm just like everybody else that's that's watching the show. You I just bring have to be the audience the in. That's yeah. by doing that, you make it yourself yeah. relatable to who's watching, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I also understand I had, in voiceover, they they give you what, what we call signatures. In other words, a way to describe who you are uh, vocally. So with you, I would say, you know, he's he's excitable. He's 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 passionate. He's uh, uh, youthful. He's uh, uh, you know, kind of a little bit, little bit street. I mean, I'll use all those kind of terms to kind of describe you a little bit. We'll take that. Yeah, we'll yeah, take yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like that. And this, and this is, so this, and this way helps to kind of. I know it sounds negative to pigeonhole you, but it's really important so people can know who you are. So it's like if, if an agent is trying to sell you, they can say he's this, 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 and like, oh, perfect, got it. I had a, uh, a casting director describe my vocal signature as approachable intelligence. Yeah, now, that, that doesn't mean that I'm brighter than anybody else. It just means that That's how you when, sound. You, when you hear me, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. And it's also not threatening. It's not professorial. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm giving you information that's going to scare the shit out of you. It's more yeah. like, hey, listen, I, I found this new information. Why don't you come in and uh, share this with me? So I understand that that is my, my strength. So I, I play to that strength in the show. I, I, now, I, yeah. because you do voiceover so yeah. much for all History Channel shows, yeah. do you approach the different shows differently? Curse of Oak Island is yeah, way yeah, different yeah, than yeah, Asian yeah, Aliens. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, it's, it, each one is slightly different. It's still going to be me. I'm not going to go in there and just be like Daniel Day-Lewis and, and shift, and all of a sudden I'm this <laughs> shape-shifting voiceover guy. You don't even know who I am. I've got to dress in a weird way. No, it's it, uh, depending on the show... I'll look at it and, and understand what it is I have to do with. With Ancient Aliens, it's a, it's a show about questions, mm-hmm. you know? So I understand that I'm ask, going to be asking a lot of questions. We ask questions. We don't really necessarily spoon-feed you the answers. We give you some information and then let you guys decide whether it's, it's BS or whether it's, it's, it's the truth or not or whether you believe it. And with, uh, with Oak Island, since it's a, a show about exploring, it's, it's a show about discovery. It's a show about... about uh, perseverance about of not being uh, uh, frustrated or to, to the point of where you stop. It's like having a dream and, and continuing. So I need to know, so what I try to do is I try to drive that message of the show forward with the narration. So maybe it's a little bit more active in the narration. It's a little bit more, they're going over here and doing this. Plus I'm doing a lot of that. Yeah. I'm saying, meanwhile, back at the money pit, meanwhile over here, now they're doing this, now they're having a meeting. So a lot of it is informational, but, if, but I've got to help drive the action forward a little bit. Yeah, almost I like a musician, like when they write, to have a certain approach to a song, or a certain style they use in a song, or they, they hear a beat and they say, okay, I got to make these words fit the emotion of this beat or something yeah. like that. It's yeah. almost kind of like you yeah, get the yeah, script, yeah. you see the show, and then you feel the emotion of it and say, okay, this is the voice I'm going to use now. I'm going to yeah. use my high voice. I'm going to use my low voice. I'm going to use my quirky voice, something like that. Exactly, exactly. Oh, brilliant. Uh, so before I forget, I do want to go through this really quick. Um, I've, I've, I'm just so impressed by your your career, man, and your credits. Oh, okay. uh, the I, first it, day of class when they went down, I took voiceover class at Kalmanson and Kalmanson over in Burbank shout out. Um, with Rob over here. And the first day, they have someone come in and read Rob's entire vocal history. <laughs> I was like, was that and the whole just, class? It was just a, it was, <laughs> actually, it was a, 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 definitely an abridged version. It was, it was an abridged, but it, mm-hmm. w- it was like five minutes long, and everyone was like, oh my. God, who it's insane. Man. Rob just Damn. comes in. He's like, hey, everybody. So it's, nice. It's, so it's wonderful. Insane. And you're such a down-to-earth, wonderful, personable, mm-hmm. joking, lighthearted person. I'm so glad it's refreshing well, in this industry to have people well, that so, are What we're so doing is so silly. I mean, look, look at what we're doing now. I mean, yeah, isn't this, yeah. Isn't this kind of crazy to, to imagine that? Did you think that in your life this is where you, what you were going to do? Hell no, no of man. Of course I'm a, not. I'm a musical theater actor, yeah, turned yeah. producer, yeah. and radio show host. I never thought yeah. I was going to be here. But I'm isn't it a ton of fun? Designer. Oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite it, things. And, yeah. and what happens is something like this will turn into something else. Another door will open. It's 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 amazing if you just follow that 
that, uh, you know, the universe, so to speak, not that I'm going to get all artsy-fartsy spiritual on you or anything. Hey, but no, nah, you're talking hey, to an well, alchemist here, true. man. I'll, I'll, I'll walk down that train with okay, you. Walk down that okay, road. cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, I do, uh, we talked about your early career a little yeah. bit, and then we, we stopped and we, we made a big highlight on StarCraft. Mm -hmm. So from StarCraft in 98, I'm going to go through your IMDb a little bit, and I'm going to okay. list off some credits, and okay. I wanna, I'm going to stop on some that I'd like to uh, ask you just like, what was it like on this? Because oh, okay. they're some of my favorite. Is that cool? Yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. gonna, we sure. Geek out. We're going to geek out. Geek session. Gonna, so literally right after StarCraft, your next credit is Mulan. Can we start there? Because, like, sure. what was Mulan like? And you're credited as a hun. And, like, by the way, I, uh, like I said, musical theater actor over here, bro. Like, uh, I just, I, I'm geeking out myself. And did they ask myself. you to come back to be a hun in the live action Mulan? Wow. Uh, you know, um, animation is is a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, work, work. You know, I've done. This was part of an ADR group. First, I was going to say musical theater. I envy you because I can't carry a tune in a bucket. I mean, I'm literally. I, can't, I, can't, I never I, said I was good. <laughs> okay, okay Gavroche. Oh, oh, so, so you know, I worked on Milan. I worked on uh, Spirit of the uh, Spirit Stallion of the. I'm trying to remember. Spirited all the, Away. Spirit Away. Yes, but there's a, there's like a whole bunch of animated things in there. Incredibles uh, Two. Incredibles Two. Most most well, recently, man, Incredibles Incredibles that. Two. This coming up. Um, so a lot of that, it wasn't like I, they had like super featured role, but they would bring in a group of actors, just like it was almost an ADR session, but we would do specific characters for that animated movie. So, you know, working with that is always, one of the things I love about when we, when I do do ADR is that you get to see a film in a, in a area of the pro or a part of a portion of the process that most people don't get to see. Some of it right. is fully animated. Some of the stuff is just pencil drawing. Some of the stuff is, is nothing. I worked on, most recently, uh, oh God, uh, Call of the Wild, which is, which is a movie that's going to be coming out. It's going to be a live action, but it's going to be mm. heavily uh, with a lot of... Um, talking, uh, animals. talking animals. Yeah, talking animal motion capture. <laughs> and But they needed to bring in actors to play all the roles mm -hmm. of the main characters because it was, at that point, it was still in the, I guess, the process where they're, they're pitching it to, to Disney. You know, they're, they're going through and they're going, we want to make sure that they're happy with, with this, that, and the other thing. So I got to play, like, one of the major, major characters in Call of the Wild. Dope. So it's 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 challenging, it's interesting, it's fun. And uh, when you work on an animated movie, you generally get a bit more money than you do on a, a live-action film. Ooh. So that's good, because you're not, you're not competing with stunt people for, for residuals. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, true. So smaller casts. Yeah. We like that. When you're doing something like Call of the Wild, what, I know yeah. I know a lot of um, I know a lot of animated movies. They like to, you know, take a um, uh, uh, like a video of you while you're doing oh, the yeah. ADR, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they will take the video and then put your facial, I don't know, characteristics into that character. Do, would they do something like that on Call of the Wild? Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's but because it's animals, you think they would try to make the animal look a little bit like the person? Well, we weren't doing, you know, I wasn't doing an animal. We were doing the humans. They're, okay. they're going to fully animate, uh, you know, the, all the animals that are that are in the movie. Mm. But, and I think the person that is playing my role in the actual movie when it's when it's made, I think it's Harrison Ford. Oh, I nice. Mean, I mean, they, they've got some <laughs> serious, oh, yeah. serious actors that are coming in, yeah. And, uh, and but they, but yeah, they would video us because they wanted to do some kind of a an animated presentation that they could give to the executives as as to how the movie is 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 moving along mm -hmm. and it's it's all part of making everybody that's spending the money feel good about yeah. what, what it is they're doing <laughs> and being included in the process so you know you don't want to just give give somebody 200 million dollars make a movie and not be involved you want to at least going to have a meeting every once in a while where somebody comes in and kind of kisses the ring a little what's, bit. What's the yeah. update? You know, <laughs> yeah. What, what's going on? Report. Can we see that? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, somebody can say, oh yeah, I've got a. I, I, I'd love to meet you for lunch, but I've got to go take a look at this uh, early screening of Call of the Wild. You know, I'm to be geeky on it. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. So, so uh, it's, it's, but it's, it, it is important, and, and it's, and it's, it's fun. It's creatively, incredibly exciting to do. So anytime you do work on an animated film, it's fun because it's. You know, it's wide open. Who knows what you're going to be playing? So it leads me to my next question, which yeah. is about one of your live action roles. But yes. in between those, I got to, I got to, I got to list some shit here, bro. For you. So, uh, you got the Iron Giant, mm -hmm. Jag, oh. Drew Carey, yep. the yep. Emperor's yep. New Groove, yep. Accidental yep. Spy, West yep. Wing. Yep. Uh, it brings us to one hour photo with the late, the great Mr. Robin Williams. Yeah. Yep. That what was, was, what was that like? Uh, it was, it was 
pretty spectacular because um, Robin was a, he, he was not what you would think he would be like in, in real life. Um, he, you know, his persona was one of very big, very loud, very, you know, always on. And actually, when you meet him one-on-one -on -one or met him one-on-one, -on -one, he, was, he was almost shy. I've you know, heard that. Yeah, he was shy. He was quiet. He was timid. He was. He was. He was. Um, he was. He was a very sensitive person, mm. and uh, I, I. I found him very, uh, very, very nice to be around. And we. We did. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a, a funny story about working on one hour photo. I mean, first of all, they they hired me, and I got to go, and uh, they brought me. You know, they brought everybody in that was in the movie uh, to do a, 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 a table read. So you had. All, everybody was there that was in the movie, and, and here I was, wow, nice. you know, reading characters and di different things with them. So it was a, a ton of fun. And when we were working on this on the scene, it was a scene where I played like an eye surgeon. I think there was a in the movie. Um, he's he's in a hotel and he's trying to escape. I'm trying to remember what it, what it, what the, the specifics were. He has a bag, whatever it is, and he he walks through a door. And he happens to walk into this giant hall where it's dark and there's somebody up on stage who's giving a lecture and that person that's giving the lecture is me. And he has to walk across in front of all these people. And there must have been 200 extras that were sitting in seats. And, you know, the lecture is interrupted and he walks through and he kind of says a little thing and I mm. say something to him and he walks out the door and he's, and he's gone. Well, <laughs> imagine this. I mean... Robin Williams is still Robin Williams. He, 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 the reason I said he had this bag, he had this kind of a shoulder bag that was like over his shoulders that, that he was carrying with him. And you know, cameras in in the room, and they call action, and the door opens up, and he's standing there in the door, and he walks in, he walks across, and he goes out the other door, and the director says, "Great, great, great, let's do it again." So you know, he did it like two or three times, and then one take. I'll never forget this. The door, and this is on film. I know they have this. I know they have this. The door opens, and Robin Williams is only wearing his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> He's only with his underwear, <laughs> with with this bag just in front of of you know the, the jewels, <laughs> and he does the whole scene. He stands there and he kind of like wanders, like like kind of timid, and looking. Everybody's looking at, him. and it was. I was. I was thinking. I was watching, going. Well, I know they're not going to use this. This this is crap. But I was watching, you know, I'm up on stage and I'm watching all the extras kind of trying to figure out how they're supposed to react because some of them are thinking, well, maybe this is supposed to happen. Uh, we don't know. Creative or, choice. Some, some people are kind of giggling a little bit. But it, the, he held it through the whole scene, went through, walked out the door, and then I think everybody applauded at that point. Nice. And then even during a, a, a break, he and I actually went up, we were up on stage and I used to do do improv as well. And he and I improvised some some stuff together just, just to have some fun. Oh, so he was awesome. he was a really really fun fun guy very very sweet and uh, certainly uh, certainly missed incredibly yes. talented actor as well yes and it, you know it's refreshing to hear that you know you can still take yourself out of the moment it, because it, one hour photo in case you haven't seen it it's mm. a little bit of a serious movie mm. like it's it a is very not serious movie. Yeah. it is not your typical Robin it ain't Mrs. Doubtfire was that his right? first big like serious role kind of like no. that no no, no. 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 But, he, but he was nominated, I mean, he was nominated Marty... for an Oscar for that though yeah but, and Robin you know you gotta remember he's Juilliard he yes. is Juilliard trained that man is a renaissance man yeah. Um, yeah, so he's... I, it's it's really refreshing to see somebody as an actor of his caliber that can you know deliver in that seriousness and then still take himself out of it and walk into his underpants in the middle of the well, scene. Well, the thing <laughs> is, you know, he he understood how silly it all is, and and actually it, it takes the pressure off. I remember one time I did an audition for I don't know if you were talking about uh, Criminal Minds, and it was for a, a very very serious part on on Criminal Minds. And Tim Matheson was directing it, and it was a scene where uh, I play this this father uh, who whose daughter was murdered in, in, in college, and you know he's he's broken up, and his wife is is totally distraught, and it's a very very heavy scene. And at the end of the scene, uh, you know, being interviewed by the FBI agents, and and they ask me if there's any note or anything that she left, and I kind of look to see if my wife is seen because she's very upset and I pulled this note out and, and I hand, hand it to them and I say you know I, I love my dog I love my wife and it was a you know her, her note, suicide note so to speak mm -hmm. and uh, so it was very very deep scene very heavy and I was performing this 
in front of Tim Matheson and a couple of the producers, and there was a casting director, and she was there next to me, and I, uh, I did the scene, and then at the end, you know, I give her the the piece of paper, and it's, you know, I, I say I love my wife, and uh, <laughs> but because I was just just me, I handed her to, I handed her this piece of paper after this heavy heavy scene, and I just looked at her and I said. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was like this moment of silence and then Tim Matheson started busting up the, the executive producer started busting up and they realized that this guy would be fun to work with first of all I was able to deliver give them what they wanted but yeah. then at the same time it's like hey listen man we're just, just yeah, have you know, a little fun yeah we're having some fun here so for Robin to do that uh, was a great testament to how uh present he was as a person mm -hmm. and maybe maybe he just needed to do that just kind of relief a little bit of, of, of pressure maybe who knows Dude, maybe, that character's or maybe, dark or maybe just yeah, yeah, just yeah just a little it's, monotony or yeah. something yeah what is the favorite what is like your couple favorite projects that you've worked on as far as memories in your career and just like things that you're like oh that was really fun i had that was lucky of me i got to do that well you talked about colombo that yeah. was that was one of the first things i did and actually uh uh, it, it, God, that was one of the first TV shows I did. I think it was like 1975 or something. Damn. It was way, way back. But I was young, young, young guy, and we f actually went and uh, shot it in South Carolina at the Citadel. Were you is, out of high school when you did that? Yeah, I think. I, yeah, I guess I was. I guess I was just, just out of high school. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was really, it, it was, it was incredible to be there for a couple of weeks because I was there for like two weeks. I had a, had a pretty nice part. I played the, uh, funny, the, the Boodle Boy. Nobody knows what a Boodle Boy <laughs> is. But Patrick McGowan, I don't know if you know who Patrick McGowan was, from the, uh, he was the, the prisoner, he was in uh, you know, Braveheart. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, I yeah. Mean, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. And he actually won the the Emmy for Best Guest uh, Performance uh, for, for that role. It was a two-hour Columbo, and we shot it at this place called The Citadel, which was, uh, I think, one of the first graduating classes fought in the Civil War or the Confederacy. I mean, it's been there since, you know, the mid-1800s. And it was very, um, I, I guess, there was a lot of tradition that was associated with it. And here I was, you know, I was, I don't know, 17, 18 years old, however old, old I was when I when I go there. And they, and I was playing one of the cadets. And this was during the summer. And it was in South Carolina, so it's, it was pretty hot and humid. And the um, commanding officer who was, you know, colonel of whomever he was, or general, whatever, uh, was... You know, obviously former military. Apparently, this guy was a pretty hard, hard-ass marine at one point, and uh, you know, fought in World War II. And he was the guy that would show me how to salute, how to do an about face, right? And there were some students that were still there during the summer that, I guess, they took exception to the fact that here I was dressed in their uniform, the cadet of an underclassman, and here I was, you know hanging out with Colonel, and, uh, you know, there's, like, a, this big checkerboard kind of a, a uh, I guess, a center area where you're not supposed to walk. You're supposed to walk on the outside. And, I, you know, I didn't know. I just yeah. walking across. So I was getting all kinds of dirty looks, and the, my hair was a little bit longer than huh. than it than it should have been. Apparently, it should have been, like, a complete buzz cut, but mine was a little bit longer. So they didn't like any of that. Hmm. And one of the uh, one of the, the um, drivers, local drivers, came up to me, during the shoot, and at one point he says, you know, um, Bauer, you, uh, I don't think I'd walk around here by myself. And I said, I said oh. and I'm like, why? He goes, and I still don't know what this means. Maybe I misunderstood what he said, but this is what I heard. He goes, well, word has it that uh, some of the cadets would like to initial you. Now I don't know initiate. what that I don't know. And maybe it was initiate me. I maybe it was, but he, it sounded like he said initiate <laughs> me, like somebody was gonna, yeah, like, gonna yeah, yeah, I know. I thought somebody was gonna carve something into yeah. me with a blunt instrument, and I realized, okay, wow, <laughs> there we go. So uh, needless to say, I found uh, found a good strong buddy that I could I could hang with. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's but yeah, nice. Colombo. But actually, it was a great show. It was fun. I mean, Patrick McGowan was, you know, amazing, and it was one of my first times I ever got to go out of L.A. on location to shoot. So that was that was a real kick. Yeah. Were you for uh, fast forward uh, Da Vinci Code? Yes. Uh, you're credited as the voice of Dr. Robert Langdon yes. in the video game. Yes. How how was that? Knowing that Tom had already done that part, and that you now have to come in after the fact. Tom, Tom who? 
Well, yeah. Tom, he doesn't exist at that point. Tom, I, no, I, yeah, I mean, you're, I'm not, well, I'm, you're, not, I'm not going to be influenced by what, what Tom Hanks did. I mean, he, 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 he was, you know, he was Robert Langdon. That, well, that's my, that was so, my question. So is, they, they, did they, you... heard, they heard me. Well, they, okay, they, no, got, no. they got Robert Clotworthy. They couldn't afford uh, Tom Hanks, so they went for Clotworthy. Well, of, co- of course. But you didn't hear, like, did the studio ask you, hey, play this more like Tom? Or, like, and you have to, <laughs> do you have to deal? More like Tom. No. Well, oh, my God. Do they do that? Did hold on, that? because yeah. you got, there are, <laughs> there are unique questions. It, it's a challenge because it's an IP that had already... Yeah. Been released yeah. and been iconic in, in a film first, and yeah. now you're just approaching it from a different market, a different medium. Yeah. So as an actor, I'm wondering, do you even? I mean, obviously you answered this question a little bit, but you're like, no, I don't care. I don't have anything influenced. But did you have outside influence uh, well, on I, that project? Well, I'd actually, you know, I'd read the book, so I happened to be a fan of of, of the book, and uh, I'd seen the movie, so I was familiar with it, and I was just actually thrilled to to be cast. You know, I just gave it my own interpretation. I obviously, you know, you need to respect what what the other actor has already done because if you go in there and you try to do a complete 180, the audience is not gonna not gonna buy it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's like well, wait a minute, you know, that, that's that's not Robert Lang. It's like when they tried to replace me in in StarCraft. They have they brought somebody else. I was like, no, 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 that doesn't that doesn't fly. <laughs> so. So I respected what he did. I certainly honored it. I, I knew about it, and I certainly wasn't going to do something that was completely uh, 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 in opposition to what his performance was because he was pretty pretty solid. I mean, you know, Langdon was pretty. You know, once you once you figure out who the who the guy is, you basically just have to uh, get out of the way as an actor and not and not screw it up. Um, what was your experience like on Two and a Half Men? How did that come about? I've done. I did a lot of shows for Two and a Half Men. Which, by the way, I got a. I just um, hung out with. Um, I hung out on a project that we're putting together. Ramon Estevez and Ray James. Ray was a writer oh, on uh, on uh, Anger Management, but I think he did some consulting on Two and a Half. But you know, Ramon is yeah. you know Charlie's brother and everything. So I was just curious because I was after talking with them so much and hearing about the show from their angle. I'm like, oh, this is another person. You were there from the pilot. Is that correct? I as I. Played a pilot. The pilot. Oh, the, I'm not, sorry. The, not the pilot episode. I, I thought was, you were there. I, was the, I just looked at the dates. No, I was, I was the pilot of uh, Ashton Kutcher's uh, private plane. Oh. So whenever, oh, we, whenever we go someplace, okay. yeah. Oh. So, but but I, I I must have done. I think I did like 11, 12 episodes for for two and a half minutes. Different uh, different voices on the show as part of the the Chuck Lorre uh, uh, repertoire company. It was, oh, it was kind, it was kind of that nice. makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, do you have advice for the up and comer, the the kid? I mean, I know we touched on it a little yeah, bit, I mean, but you, like, you what, really what's have something that we can. It's you really have to know your craft. You really have to be comfortable in your own skin. You have to be a good actor to be successful, uh, because especially if you're coming to a, a major market like Los Angeles, because the competition is fierce. If you want to get into voiceover, one of the nice things about about the business right now, since so much of it is is internet based i want to say it's just that it's so i mean i can i can record when i'm you know i don't have to be in la anymore to to audition i can be basically anywhere um so you don't have to be actually in los angeles to to start your voice career one thing i would do is i would try maybe smaller markets the more experience that you can get even if you're on one of Mm -hmm. those pay-for-play sites where you are just getting auditions doesn't make any difference whether you get them or not it's more important that you just practice that you are able to Put stuff out there that you create a discipline that you start having a uh, I don't want to say a routine, but you need to be very specific and, and serious about about the business because the people that are successful are pretty serious, especially in voiceover. There are some people, obviously, uh, on camera doesn't take a lot of talent or ta- I'm going to say that, but talent isn't necessarily the 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 highest requirement for, to be successful on camera. I mean, you know, there's some yeah, people that looks and style yeah, and all that. Yeah, looks, thing. charisma, yeah. all that kind of stuff works. Uh, you know, uh, like I remember that Harrison Ford in one movie, um, he had like a, I don't know, it was like a two or three page monologue or something they wanted him to say. And he looked at it and he says, he says, I don't need to say this. I can do all this with just a look. <laughs> so, so literally, mm-hmm. so they said, yeah, I can give you all that information that you're, that you're looking for without saying all these words because the words are superfluous. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, in voiceover, Exactly the opposite is true. The, the voice is everything. So you really need to be able to to get those words off the page, have an interpretation, understand who you are, and you just have to do it a lot, okay. a lot. I mean, the biggest problem that I have with students 
is they come and they can't get the words off. Okay. And they're stumbling over just simple stuff. Mm. And I asked them if they, if they read out loud. Well, you know, I said, no. Nah. When I was a kid, maybe it was just me, but I was one of those kids that liked to read. And I would get a book and I would try to read it out loud just for fun. Mm. And I would challenge myself. I would say, how, I was almost like a lizard. I'd have one eye on, on the word that I was saying and the other eye was looking maybe like <laughs> a sentence ahead so I could kind of get a sense of where I was going. And I would challenge myself. Can I, without knowing what this sentence is or what this paragraph is or where it begins or where it's going to end, what's going to happen here, can I give it an interpretation so that it makes sense? And it was challenging. It was fun to do. And now it's it's a it's a critical skill. You know, when I go in to do all these narrated uh, shows, I do them pretty quickly because I go in there, I, I I read it, I read it out loud to make sure we got all the words right without an interpretation, interpretation, just to make sure there's 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 nothing phonetically that's weird or misspelling or whatever it is or something I don't understand. Have it explained, and then I'll do it like two times after that generally, and then those of those two takes. One of those they'll they'll take, nice. one of those they'll accept. So so if it's an hour show, it may take me an hour, fifteen hour, twenty minutes to do. Whereas somebody else who doesn't have that skill may take them three hours to do. And that's also an important thing you have to think about in voiceover. You're, if you're one of those people that takes forever to do stuff, they're not going to want to hire you. Yeah. No, people, they don't people see are that. looking for people that can go in, bang it out, and do it. And if they say you know give me more blue or make them angry or make them happy, like with with Starcraft, they'd give me a line. It would be. Uh, you know, like, uh, Tychus, what have you done, right? Now, mm -hmm. there's no context to that. I don't know what that means. It could be maybe he's got a birthday cake. So, Tychus, what have you done, right? It's good news or it's or it's bad news or something in, in between. Or maybe I'm just curious, Tychus, what have you done? You know, I don't know. So they, th th that's where the director says, no, what's happening here is this. And you go, ah, got it. And then you're able to go right to that. So it's really important to be facile and be able to, to move and to adjust and not get too hung on hung on to what it is you're doing because what you're doing may not be what they want. Yeah. So you got to be able to let it go and go, okay, I'll go over here. Yeah. Jazz. Well, uh, exactly, baby. Jazz. Jazz, 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 man. Jazz, jazz, baby. Snap the fingers, I like that. Focus yeah. on those cold reads too, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Last, but yeah. certainly not least, mm -hmm. my, uh, my final question is a dream question for all of our guests. Yeah, uh, right. Personal or professional, if yeah. somebody handed you a giant bag of money, what would you want to go do? Like, a project, a personal thing, shit. You can go on vacation, go to the French Riviera. Uh, you know, like what? What's what's like? Oh, if I had this accessible, uh, uh, how, accessible. How, much, how much money are we talking about? I mean, you say it's a bag of money. Uh, I mean, no, no, be, no. Uh, could be a hundred dollars in there. Elon right? Musk money. Much. Elon Musk dropped his his. Well, you know, something of that level, billions. Anything. The freedom to do what you want oh, is the point. Man, you know, well, obviously, you know, it's not so obviously. I mean, I, I'd want to. I would, I would look at that as, as a great blessing and and completely undeserved. One of the things you need to have in, in also in, in the business is to let go of your expectations. If you let go of your expectations, then when good things happen to you, it's really exciting. When the things that you, you know, in the old days that you expected to happen, happen, you're still excited. You're, not, you're never going to be really disappointed because you don't have that expectation. So if somebody, I don't expect that kind of money somebody to give me Elon Musk kind of money. All of a sudden, you know, boom, it just it just happens. I've got, you know, you know, a billion dollars. What am I going to do with a billion dollars? Well, I would say, for me, I would think there's there's needs to be a certain amount of responsibility that's associated with that because who am I that I should get a billion dollars? I should be able to take that and try to benefit other people. So I, I would want to find some way to have that money do some good. And then, but of course, I'm... I'm also aware there's a lot of people, there's a lot of sharks out there. Yeah. So you gotta, you got to insulate yourself from the bad, bad people and make sure that you're able to do what it is you want to do. I, I don't know that I would want to stop doing the shows. I wouldn't want to quit work. And it, and it wouldn't be because of the money. It's because I really enjoy it. I mean, I know a lot of people that want to get into voiceover or, or people that have had careers. They retire. They want to get into it. This, this seems to be what everybody wants to do when... It's like their dream job, and in a in a very real way, it is, because it's it it check for me it checks off all the boxes the creative box the the fun box the monetary box I mean all the all the all the good things that are associated with it, so um, 
I, I don't know if I can come up with anything more specific. Yeah, I, I, I like cars, so I, you know, buy some, you know, get myself a Ferrari Daytona. How was that? Which car? <laughs> you sound like you got exactly the oh, year yeah, and yeah, model. I, oh, I, I get like a Daytona from the 70s, man. That's like, yeah. that's like, that's like, that's, mm. that's, 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 Is that's, that's there beautiful. anything you would like fix maybe like in your hometown where you grew up or anything like you'd go back? I, I grew up in L.A. Yeah, man. Well, oh, a billion dollars is not going <laughs> to, ain't going to uh, do shit. Uh, okay, you're better off. I don't know. Too much to fix. Oh, okay. Fix some potholes? I, I don't know. I get it. So burn the whole place down. It's already on its way. Start over. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we all deserve to uh, give us ourselves a little treat and a little reward and a pat on the back. So there's no harm in getting yourself a Ferrari, man. There get that, go. get there that Rari. Yeah, yeah, Rari, yeah, yeah. Rari, yeah. There you go. And, uh, and it'd have to be Ferrari red. I mean, that's. For yeah. sure. Oh, on one thing I would do, I, w I would certainly want to go to an F1 race in Monaco. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You, you are that. a car buff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You have go. you been to a NASCAR race? Uh, no, but I've, I have been to Formula One races. Oh, Formula yeah. One seems like it's a lot more fun and exciting than NASCAR. Oh. I, I, you know, I, I, to me, NASCAR is interesting, but they're just driving around in a circle. Yeah, and right. yeah Formula yeah. One's real driving. Like, you got to go <laughs> left and right and turn, and they got the different speeds and stuff. Yeah, and uh, oh, oh, God, I'm drawing a blank now for the British driver who's the, like, drives for Mercedes. He's like number one. Oh, my God. He's the, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, Lewis, Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis, Lewis, Hamilton. Lewis, uh, Lewis Shout Hamilton. out to Lewis. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Maybe own a race team. IndyCar. Mm. Oh no, that that's, that's too much. Too much work. Mm. <laughs> too much, too much, too much <laughs> frustration. Really and, 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 and also, I like I like to win. Yeah. You know, and, and, and unless you know you're one of the major major players, you're gonna be you know coming in seventeenth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, it's a living. <laughs> there you it's go. A the drivers make a lot of money. No, they yeah. they do really well. Yeah. As a kid, I would have liked to have been a like a Formula One uh, oh, driver. You still could. You could do the. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, you should see me now on the on the on the freeway. I'm like a nervous Nelly. You know, it's like I've got my lane departure thing going off. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm scared. I'm going over sixty. That's all right. We're gonna get Elon to get you a gold plated <laughs> Tesla. Yeah. And we're gonna get gold one of the dusted. new, the new, dusted. new yeah. gold dusted, and then uh, Roadster, new Roadster. What is that? Zero to sixty in one point seven what, seconds. Don't they call that like what? ludicrous mode or something? Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, Chris mode. And some of them drive themselves, that. so a you'll be fine. Wait, there's a car that does that. <laughs> I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to be in a car that's driving. And we'll get you your <laughs> no, own tunnel. Me neither. That's the thing. I don't trust the, I mean, you know, like, technology's great, and I love tech, you know. But at the end of the day, I like you. I want my car, like, to be no computer chips. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, strictly yeah. manual operated. Yeah, I, I drove know. a stick forever, exactly. man. Exactly. I yeah. rode a motorcycle and drove a stick all my life growing up. I mean, I sail, like, I'm all about the hard line of yeah. mechanical features yeah. of yeah. a vehicle. Yeah. So somewhat a carburetor and a stick shift, and you're good. Oh, it's it's fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. And it is. And you feel it more. It's more, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. in tune with you as a person because my, you my know first my car was a, a, a Fiat 124. I, I didn't even know how to drive a stick. And I bought the car. I was what, 16 years old, 17 years old. I drove it up the lot. I said, bought that I'm, car with that Colombo money. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the, the day rate was like 157 at yeah. that point. So, no, no. But, anyways, well. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to leave anybody on? Because I'm so grateful for you being here. Gabby, thank you for uh, bringing your steam teacher. Yeah, it's yeah. it's an honor. Yeah, thank you, Gabby. It, yeah. it is a pleasure. And it's, uh, you know, for you to drop so much experience and wisdom uh, is, is a blessing for us. Uh, it was my pleasure to be here. I really enjoyed this, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's go around. And, uh, is there any place that anything you want to promote besides you got you got a convention coming up? You got a website? Yeah, Where we can people find you? Uh, what yeah, do you yeah, got? Follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Rob underscore Clontworthy on Twitter. Uh, Facebook page, I think it's real Robert Clontworthy. I'm trying to remember what the heck it is. And uh, if you're in Baltimore or in that area next weekend, drop by uh, Alien Con. And I think we also have another one coming up for the people in L.A. It hasn't been announced yet, but uh, they, they sent me an email, but it's happening next June. So it's going to be at the... Can you believe this? The L.A. Convention Center. Oh, we should I'll tell you what. Hey, That's an upgrade. That is mm -hmm. big. Hey, Carl, go ahead and apply for press credentials for that, bro. Yeah, yeah. No problem. I'll, I'll, do, I'll tell you what. I'll do better than that, man. You, you just let me know. Yeah. I'll make sure you're taken care of. All right? No, okay. we'll, 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 we'll look at that. That's right. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's bring it home, Carl. Let's, uh, let's go around the circle. Yeah, well, you know, it's Mr. C.D. Enforcer. Always check me out at the Comedy Store on Mondays, the Ding Dong Show. We always jump it off at 10 o'clock. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, also check out uh, GT's Comedy Jam. Uh, that's a website you go to. We do a couple of shows a month. Great situation. Uh, check out The Clapper Always. That's on Netflix. Uh, also check out Office Uprising. That's always going down. Play a couple movies on Crackle. Sony Situation. Great stuff going on. 
Uh, we just did recently did Cross 3. We're working on that, so check out Cross Wars 1 and 2 and check out 3 so you can see me up in that joint ski bop when it drop. Like, shame in the chat. And uh, pop your call on Instagram, <laughs> man. Peace out. Let's get back. Hey, guys, it's Gabby Shake. Remember to watch Hermione Granger in the Quarter Life Crisis on YouTube. Follow the Princess Collective series on Instagram, and you can follow me at Gabby Shake. Yes, yes. This is Thomas. You can follow me on Instagram at tmcd with two underscores. Robert, thank you so much for coming here. My pleasure. Yes. Devin? Yeah, Sailor underscore Dev up in the building. But more importantly, go follow at Skip Bags Radio. Go check out our other shows on our website, skipbags.com. You can check out Fight Dub, which we've had our next guest next week tune in for Albert the Warrior Ooh. Morales. Uh-oh. Coming in here to promote his new fight. He's getting back in the game. Uh, kicking ass and taking names. But uh, you can check out our episode, our inaugural episode of Fight Dub is with him as our guest. So enjoy. Look at uh, look at the Mix and Serve that's uh, being released this week. And you can find that on our website through our social media as well. And as always, big shout out, thank you to Dash Radio and Dash Talk X. Ladies and gentlemen, Skip Bags Radio. We, we out. out. Woo! Skip Bags Radio.